everybody knows that smoking is a big problem when it comes to anything it's got to do with blockage formation, whether in PAD or any other vessel. Uh, so why, uh, I'm just start with, it's always good to start with the why because no one is safe from the ill effects of smoking. And if you go on the CDC website, they have testimonials from patients. This gentleman is 31 years old, uh, Brandon. Uh, he lost both legs at the age of 18 uh, from burgers. Now burgers happens to be different than PAD. Uh, one situation where smoking leads to a very intense inflammation of the vessels. Uh, but that's one extreme uh, that kind of illustrates that no one is immune from smoking, even the very young folks. And I've seen very young people uh, below the age of 30 lose legs. Uh, uh, another example is another young man. Smoking is not only a problem itself, but it really makes other problems uh, all that much worse. We all know diabetes is a big issue for PAD. But when you add smoking to, to diabetes, it becomes a very substantial uh, problem for the patients and much, much harder blockages to treat. Uh, this uh, unfortunate gentleman ended up passing at the age of 42, uh, you know, had smoked from the age of 15. So that, that is really why uh, we want to talk about this because it's not just, you know, well, what if, you know, I, I lose my leg at the age of 100 it's not the end of the world. Well, no, it's not that. It really happens at a much, much younger age with smoking. So how exactly smoking, uh, you know, does the bad tricks it does on the body, it really does it through multiple things. And I'm going to summarize them here, but there's more to it than this one slide. So smoking lowers your good HDL, your good cholesterol, because a good cholesterol, the HDL, think of it as a sweeper. It runs through the bloodstream, picks up all the bad cholesterol from the uh, vessel walls, takes it back to the liver to discard it. So the higher HDL you have, the better it is. Smoking impedes, you know, lowers your HDL. It raises your triglycerides. That's another bad fat in your blood that raises, you know, the chance of plaque formation. It makes the blood more sticky. It makes the blood more clot prone. It damages the cells that are lining the vessel wall, very, very important cells, whose job is to prevent cholesterol and inflammatory cells from seeping into the vessel wall to create the blockage. When those cells get damaged, that's basically how the whole process of blockage gets started and continues to propagate. And increases the buildup of plaque within the vessel wall, eventually causing the vessel to shut down and cause issues. Uh, you know, so, a quick question to people here in the audience, you know, every cigarette you smoke reduces your life expectancy by how, how long. And, you know, I'd, I'd like people to kind of take a guess between the time between classes, the length of a, a Victorian speech, the average Instagram scroll session. You can tell that these questions are tailored more to the young folks uh, who are following all those things. But then three songs by rappers uh, that start with Lil, the answer is, uh, it's actually uh, three throngs. It's every cigarette will reduce your life expectancy by 11 minutes. That's actually pretty astounding if you think about somebody smoking two packs a day. You know, that's a lot of minutes uh, reduce of their life, life expectancy every day. So which of these chemicals is not in tobacco smoke? And obviously I'm leading you down to option E here. These and many, many, many more are all available and present in tobacco smoke and in a lot of vaping as well. And there's actually more than 7,000 chemicals found in tobacco smoke, uh, a little bit less in uh, vaping, uh, but all of them are very bad. And if you look back here, I mean, these are, these are bad things here. Formaldehyde is very bad. Cadmium, that's what's in your battery acid. Benzene, that's a, that's a main cause of bladder cancer in addition to other harms on the vessel side. And, uh, and th this is a non-exhaustive, but a sample of all the things that are in nicotine. This is from the CDC. This is from the Surgeon General report dated 2014. I encourage people to look at it. Arsenic, I don't think any one of us wants arsenic in their mouth or their body, but guess what? That rat poison is, all, is also present in the cigarette smoke. Uh, so, Everybody talks about nicotine. I, as a cardiologist, I, I, 
I worry about nicotine, but honestly, of all those chemicals I just shared with you earlier, uh, it's almost like nicotine worries me the least. And it's kind of a good idea for, for patients to understand, for smokers to understand how each cigarette peaks their nicotine level you know, at 40 minutes, but it stays in their system for about 120 minutes afterwards. And then what the nicotine replacements uh, do and how they work and how much nicotine they give you. Uh, and again, as a cardiologist, I'm gonna tell you, but also the cancer doctors would agree, nicotine is the, the least of our concern, even though it is a concern, okay? But it's all the other chemicals that lead to the damage of that, what we call the intima, the lining of the vessel, that's where the problem starts, okay? So tobacco kills 1,300 people every day in the US alone. These are real numbers. It used to be a much bigger number, by the way, so this is a little better than it used to be, just because less people are smoking now, but still too many are smoking. Think of this as an illustration of what the vessel wall normally looks like, okay? It's really think of it as a hose with three layers. The innermost layer is extremely thin, a single layer of cells called the intima, whose main job when, when it's healthy is to, to prevent anything from seeping inside the vessel wall and creating plaque. When that layer gets in, damaged by uh, smoking or diabetes or the combination thereof, then you start to have cholesterol seeping within and you end up with this occluded vessel, yellow here, here being the plaque and eventually a clot on top of the plaque. This is kind of a cross section of what a vessel illustration would, would how the vessel progresses from, from perfectly healthy to a horrible situation here. And another illustration in different ways, taken more like a long longitudinal cuts. This, this here is happening already to everybody in their age of 20 and 30 and 40 plaques form. And when we are living in a healthy milieu, no smoking, no diabetes, those plaques regress. And then another plaque forms here and it regresses, okay? What happens is when we have diabetes in, in this case or smoking or both, the intima, that very, very minute layer the pink layer on top of the plaque becomes, instead of being impermeable to cholesterol and to fats and to inflammatory cells, that intima gets impaired and allows those things to get inside that plaque. And now that plaque is not going to be resolving. It's going to progress, create a blockage. And then eventually that thin intima will rupture and clot will form and the vessel, the vessel will occlude. And if it's a heart, it causes a heart attack. If it's a leg, it causes a tooth called leg or ulcer or whatever it may be. Another way of looking at it again, that's kind of how this works. It's a gradual progression. And back here, or, or actually a little before there, it's still reversible if we do the right thing. As we get here, it's still stoppable, okay? Once we get here, we have to fix the vessel, but still do prevention to prevent the other plaques and other vessels that are still in this stage from progressing to here. So, so again, this is a cross section. This is the blood, the lumen of the vessel. This is the intima single layers. This is healthy. That's what the vessel wall should look like. It's clean. There is no cholesterol in the middle. With smoking, with diabetes, with the combination thereof, with high cholesterol, this, these layers get uh, harmed. And suddenly this layer that was lining the vessels was impermeable to the bad cholesterol, LDL, to the monocytes, which are inflammatory cells, now is permeable, it's, it's impaired. So those, the cholesterol gets into the vessel wall. And in the body, there's one rule. Everything should stay where God wanted it to be. When the cholesterol, which was supposed to be only in the bloodstream, seeps into the blood vessel wall, it creates an inflammation trying to get rid of it. And that inflammation keeps going on creating, you know, a lot of big words here, but cytokines are inflammatory markers and, uh, you know, macrophages are another name for inflammatory cells. And little by little, that vessel that was normal here now is very huge plaque, complex with a very thin wall, culprit to suddenly rupturing, creating a clot and occluding the vessel. And that's what invariably happens, okay? Now, the more we... Uh, we promote the health of the intima, that lining of the vessel, the more likely we are to prevent this progression to bad outcomes or retard it substantially. At the end of the day, as we get older, some processes are gonna happen. Question here is, are we gonna have this at the age of 95 or are we gonna have it at the age of 20? And it's the choice for the, for, in large part is ours. 
so these processes take years, accelerate in the later stages of development, and are reversible to a large extent, or at least controllable. Are you finish with that? Now? So, and that's basically how you end up with blockages. And the issue with it also, God was very gracious uh, in that, you know, if you develop one blockage, many times there's collaterals around it, but in those patients that we're dealing with, with, with PAD and critical limb ischemia, blockage develops, and then another blockage develops distal to, the, to where the collateral would form, and then the third one develops, it becomes impossible, okay, for the calf or the foot or the toe to have adequate blood flow, to have no pain, and to have full function. Now, uh, on, on top of all that, there's also the cognitive part of smoking, which is a very addictive process by design. The cigarette is designed to be very addictive, not just with the nicotine, but also with the ammonia and other components within the cigarette, so that for a short bit, those who take a cigarette will have a short burst of a pleasure, you know, of dopamine release, and then they're constantly seeking that pleasure. Well, guess what? It's not really pleasure. It's destruction downstream in the vessel walls we showed you. So it's a, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy until you, you, break, you break it. Strongly encourage people to look up this report. It's available on the CDC website. It's a very, very long report, a lot of big words in it. It's more tailored for doctors, but a lot of it has good language, even for lay people who are not medical background. Uh, and, and this kind of summary of that report, it's not that only the blockages, it's also the cancers, it's the chronic diseases, it's the reduced immunity, uh, it's all sorts of things that are really at issue. And these are directly uh, linked to smoking. And, uh, and these are the diseases that are linked to even secondhand smoke exposure, not, not the minority of disease processes either. So the major conclusions then are, uh, you know, there's a, a substantial, uh, there, there's a substantial concern here. Uh, this, this has been a long century of epidemic of cigarette smoking. We are far better now than we had been before, uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And I am very concerned with so many other doctors that, uh, uh, I'm very concerned and so are many doctors that the new wave of vaping is creating the next generation of smokers. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that we are gonna be able to conquer that. I apologize for, for the noise. Uh, and this is kind of what you'll find in that report, how we really have been able with reducing, look at how those curves are going down over hundred years and parallel that with how the smoking has also gone down. You can see how the curves kind of override. Again, further proof how important smoking is in all these epidemics. So in summary, smoking is addictive. Remember that vicious cycle. Cardiovascular harm comes from accelerating the process of plaque buildup inside vessel lumens. That process was already happening, okay? We're just smoking accelerates it. Smoking is especially harmful when coupled with other cardiovascular risk factors like diabetes, like high blood pressure, like family history and bad genetics, like bad cholesterol. Uh, on the positive side, the body reparative processes can reverse some of the harm if given the chance of smoke-free intervals. And that includes re-reducing your risk of stroke, heart attack, amputation, uh, heart failure, sudden death, cancers, all of them. All of them can be at different intervals of quitting smoking, can be reversed back to almost, for some disease states, almost back to a baseline individual without smoking at 10 years. I love where you talked about vaping because we get asked that question all the time where some of our pad warriors will say, hey, I gave up smoking, but I still vape. Is that harmful? That's question number one. And then number two is, well, I don't smoke cigarettes. Is smoking pot still harmful? And my answer to number two, and I'm curious if you agree with me, is the moment that you burn something, it becomes toxic. And the moment you breathe in that toxic air from whatever you burn, it's going to damage your arteries. Absolutely. I agree with you 100% on both. So let's go with the second question first, because I've had a patient with burgers who was not a smoker, who only smoked pot. And definitely smoking pot can create the absolute worst, if you want to call it a pad, because that's a disease state that we really 
sit there, no matter how good we are, and our, our hands are tied, and we see very young folks get amputated. So absolutely, uh, marijuana use is linked to uh, to burgers uh, disease for sure. Now, going back to vaping, the problem we have, okay, we have to be honest here. On vaping, we have less than 10 years of real history. With smoking, we have over 100 years. We've studied a lot more. We can be a lot more factual and a lot more assertive, okay? So that said, uh, if somebody is gonna, if somebody is already a smoker, it is gonna use vaping as a bridge, a short-term bridge to get off the cigarette, okay? The information we have now, even though it's not complete, because for smoking, we have 100 years, for vaping, we only have 10, okay? So the information we have now is that maybe vaping is less harmful than smoking. So if somebody, I, just, I, I really talk to my patients at length about smoking every time. If somebody cannot, quote unquote, cannot quit, I say, okay, well, if you wanna go into a bridge of vaping, assuming, assuming I don't have the proof for that, that it's less harm, I'm okay with it, but it's definitely not the discussion I have with somebody who started with vaping, who was not a smoker, because they're starting from zero harm, already taking some harm. Maybe it's less than smoking, but it's definitely not a no harm situation. Was that helpful? Yes, it definitely is. And we also have a question about why is smoking following a revascularization even worse than prior to a revascularization. And one thing that I have heard in terms of answering that is that since the blood is sticky, it tends to stick to those areas that have increased inflammation and where a procedure occurs or where treatment occurs, there is a little bit more inflammation, which could be why um, it tends to block back up quicker. Is that the case? Or do you have another well, explanation? What I, what I would say, honestly, Kim, I don't know that I would say smoking is worse post revascularization than before. It's, it's worse, period, okay? I really don't know that we can say scientifically it's worse after a revascularization. It's just a horrible thing to have, but here's the deal. If you had pad that was bad enough to warrant a revascularization, okay, you are already at the tail end and you're more likely to have even more harm from continuing to smoke, okay? Uh, well more accelerated harm. Everyone's going to have just about the same harm. But, uh, you know, if you compare two people, somebody who only has a 50% blockage and somebody who has 100% multiple blockages requiring a revascularization, that second person is already further along that bad journey, if you want to call it that, of smoking. And they really have, they, they need to get their act together sort of faster than the person with a 50%, if I could put it this way. But it's, it's smoking is gonna be equally harmful every day. Every extra cigarette is equally additional harm to everybody. But when you're still younger and have had less harm, your body has a little bit more time window to repair, okay? On its own, with and without revask. Whereas when you've, you've advanced to where I or somebody like me needs to revascularize you, okay? You, you, have, you really need to wake up. You need to wake up and smell the roses. Additionally, even though we revascularize, let's say your right femoral artery and now your right foot is hunky-dory happy and you're healing your wound, well, your left leg probably has a 50 and 60 and 70% blockage that, that if you don't smoke, if it, it's gonna stay like that, we might not need to fix it. But if you keep smoking and same thing for your heart and brain vessel, if you keep smoking, those are gonna be progressing and you're gonna come back you know, either with solid cardiac death, where you don't come back, unfortunately, or with a stroke or heart attack or a contralateral leg amputation, God forbid. Thank you so much, Dr. Khatib.